we have to be honest that this matter has not covered parliament in glory. There are so many <clears throat> pieces to this puzzle that parliament itself must review. That is why I put out a statement that we need to cause an investigation into this matter and the way allies are laid. Mm. That day, I was sitting in parliament without a copy. There are so many MPs. If I tell you in all honesty, God is my witness. I read it for the first time on Mr. Franklin, Kulu, Mr. Franklin Kujo's page. For the first time. So it's only members of the subsidiary legislative committee who get to see it. And then they come and lay it. They don't give copies to other MPs. Hmm. Then 21 days, it's it becomes law. law. Right. It's after the 21 days that you have copies and if you want to have a debate, it's, it's wrong. Too We've much. turned the whole procedure upside down. So that portion of the constitution of our standing orders needs urgent review. And you see, I agree with Mr. Kofi Bento that it portrays a certain mindset that the political class, we can always just, you know, <laughs> circumvent, take ourselves out of the crisis. The transport ministry should be rather telling us what they can do to ease the congestion. Look, sometimes I'm going to my constituency. Ordinarily, just one and a half hours, you should be there. You'll be in traffic for four hours, five hours. When you arrive, some small intersection, small, some, some few potholes, or, or, you know, traffic lights not working, you know, little, little inefficiencies. This ministry has other priorities. I've been talking about Buankra. I've been saying that, look, if we are not careful, we'll soon be saddled with a, with a $3.6 billion judgment debt because of what they are doing on the Buankra project. People are not listening, mm. and they are not prioritizing that. So this whole ally, that portion was totally needless. Those who made the proposal, I am glad that, look, people are taking responsibility. Yeah. And uh, people should believe some of us when we say that we didn't see it. That's the yeah. truth. Yeah. I mean, look, if I saw it and didn't speak up, I will have conceded and admitted that um, we got it wrong. Mm. And I think that those are the subsidiary legislation who allowed it to pass are uh, taking responsibility. And it I is, think that it is I think that we should we Kofi, should we should but but, but finally yeah. finally to address this the <clears throat> leadership of the house uh, at least on our side after issuing the statement the leader called uh, the various leaders of our committees that all these matters that come in uh, from the executive before any decision is finalized at the committee level it should be submitted to leadership for them to know. Because the Honorable Atu was going also to be another layer of delay. It was also embarrassed. Another layer of delay. Yeah, if I appear be before done. the subsidiary the deeper the legislation, yeah. and subsidiary legislation, if you go before them, as I appeared before them yeah. yesterday, yeah. they will take the whole document. Yeah. They will go from clause to clause to clause to the end. Mm -hmm. And sometimes it can take days to That's do good. that. And weeks. And they don't always have the time. Yeah. And you are saying, once they are done, it has to go to the leadership. Yeah. The leadership. Yeah, to avoid these things. Look at how the institution has been embarrassed. To be honest with okay, you. Okay, Kofi, I, I was going to come to you to ask about whether you thought that, is it germane when the speaker says he can be excused? If you understand the process, the pre-laying process that went on, the speaker is not privy to it. Yeah. But is it, is it good to have the speaker of parliament say, I didn't know about it, when he presided over... The so, lane. so I'm actually quite alarmed hmm. because, you know, I saw a video where Sami was sitting next to Honorable Ayini. Yes. Mm -hmm. Where Honorable Ayini caused the bill to be laid. Yes. So I then read something on Sami's wall where he was saying he's at sea. Yes. I'm like, ah, how can you be at sea when you were just sitting right next to the person? Co copies were not made of it. Yeah, but now that you are saying it, I'm alarmed. Yeah. 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 Because I'm like, ah. Yeah. How can something as important as this go through parliament? Because the members, usually about 13 plus the chair and the ranking member, about 15 or so. Yeah. So it means that over 245 people had no idea yeah. We're just somebody outside yeah. parliament. And, yeah. and presently, yeah. their attendance is really poor. Yeah. So because a of majority of them will not know. Yeah. Um, the subsidiary legislation committee where I appeared yesterday, yeah. you had only one, uh, the ranking yeah. from the, the majority. majority. And I think uh, Sylvester Tete 
who, because he's a minister responsible, yeah. deputy minister, yeah. showed up there. Yeah. But the whole team yeah. was the opposition. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's, that's quite a... Uh, it's uh, not good. It reflects that's, in the house yeah. itself. Yeah. 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 That's quite challenging. And, I, and, 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 and that's why I'm alarmed, because I'm like, ah, oh, could you tell there, we know him. <laughs> so how can Okujeto say he doesn't know anything about this? But now that you are saying it, yeah. it makes sense yeah. that if that's the process, it can literally cut off I mean, majority of people in parliament. What do you think went into their thinking? Is it because this IGP, Dampare, has cracked the whip? So it doesn't matter who you are. If you offend, you are arrested. And MPs were getting arrested no, over actually, these that's matters. From my so checks. they want an escape. So from my checks, I've, I've spoken to some members of parliament. And really, that is the driving force. That some feel that they have an urgent job to do. And that in instances where they have been arrested, ridiculed, embarrassed, uh, that needs to be sort of put away. But some members suggested, some members of the committee suggested that why don't we call the IGP in and have a discussion with the IGP versus a law on how we can do our work diligently in instances where we may have to maybe, uh, maybe we call a, 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 a motor escort let me give you us. some information. Yeah. That has been done. The okay. IG has promised all of them, including chiefs, that please don't take it on yourself. Yeah. But if you really have urgent business, yeah. ask for it and you will be given an escort. And he's yeah. done that. That's he true. set an example and said, even me, who has a right to use it all the time, unless there's an emergency, I won't use it. And then all of us saw it. So whenever an MP, a minister, indeed, even an ordinary person, has a serious issue, you can call the next policeman available. He's giving them that instruction. Oh, okay. That where that is, this, if you are a doctor, you are going to an emergency, yes, an emergency. and you call, the yes. IG will send you an escort. And he's done that for some people. So, so, so that has been done. So if be, have even, in the absence of, even in the absence of this law, we know ministers who had their vehicles fitted with the sirens. Yeah. Illegally. Um, I got to know that Dominic Aini, for example, whilst he was Deputy Attorney General, his vehicle was fitted with a siren. Legally. For a long time, he didn't use it until he asked it to be removed. Yeah. He was given the opportunity escort. of an escort. Yes. He said he wouldn't use it. Yes. Yeah. So you see, the, 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 the facility yeah. is there. Yeah. Yeah. Not everything is an emergency. Yeah. Yeah. When you drive over the speed limit and you drive through traffic, you endanger ordinary citizens. Mm. All lateness is a function of when you leave your house. Okay. Especially in our society where people sell on the streets. Mm. Yes. Yeah. It makes it more precarious, yeah. you know, because you're you doing it yourself. Yeah. The people selling wares on the streets, mm. so you put them in further danger. Mm. So now that you are telling me this, yes. it's quite surprising also, because the conversation I had was a suggestion that let's engage the IGP, it's been done. not knowing that the IGP has already offered mm. that opportunity. Yes. So I think we must support MPs to do their work, but this is not one of the supports mm. that they need. Oh, right. And uh, when it comes to research mm. and other things, we definitely have to support them so they can give us the quality bill that we need, the acts that we need. But this is definitely not one of them. But we must say, though, per my checks, that this whole thing started over a year ago. Mm. The attempt mm. to lay this bill was over a year ago. And because of this, it stalled the whole process mm. for one year. Mm. So the ministry has been trying to lay the bill, and then it's been like, okay, you give us this, or it won't go through for over a year. Okay, so when you go to subsidiary legislation, yeah. they will flag things. Mm -hmm. People will make suggestions, yes. corrections, including typos. Yes. When all those are made, then those who are sponsoring the bill are required together with the drafting department of the attorney general mm -hmm. to make sure all those things are done yes. before it's brought back to be laid. Mm -hmm. And I think that was what was holding it, including this provision. Including this. <laughs> so yes, the process of you know, making sure everything is right, okay. including this. Right. Because the person that I spoke to said that this was one of the major reasons mm. why the bill delayed. Okay. And the minister from my checks protested, but he was coerced at some point to put it in because he needed to get the bill laid, you know. But ultimately, I think the most important thing is that Honorable Aini has apologized, and we should move on, but we should take lessons from it. Okay. Um, and, and the Honorable MP, I yeah. think, I don't know if it's, it's, it's your standing orders, but you must do something about the process 
of laying yep. a bill. How yep. can, I mean, majority of MPs yeah. don't see yeah. a bill yeah. till it comes to the... And it's, and it's, and it's, the committee, it's, it's, the committee it's, will do it's, and bring their reports. reports in 1994 that it had been late and then right. it was... Uh, then let's, the let's, get, but, let's get some quick comments budget. from... Uh, Atta Kennedy, and then, and then to move on to, to IGP, whether or not to, the to appointment of the deputy is uh, in sync with a setting agenda by the um, MPP to sort of clip the wings of the uh, at, um, IGP. So the regulation we are talking about, it provides that a siren or bell may be fitted as a warning appliance and used on the following classes of motor vehicles. A motor vehicle used for official purposes by the head of state, the vice president, the speaker of parliament, the chief justice, ministers of state, justices of the Supreme Court, and members of parliament. The original list was the president. You had the, a police service vehicle, a motor vehicle used by the Ghana National Fire Service, vehicle by the ambulance service, um, motor vehicle used by recognized government security agency, and a bullion van registered by the licensing authority. Dr. Atta Kennedy, briefly, what do you have to say? Yeah, the um, LI was unfortunate, but hmm. um, you remember that this is the same process that led to the exclusion of Santro Fiapa for and Lipe people hmm. um, yeah. representation. So we are back to the same place, but I think that it goes to a more fundamental problem. <clears throat> Sorry. And the problem is that um, when Ghanaians see a problem, um, instead of solving it as a society, we solve it just for ourselves. <laughs> the MP were trying to solve the problem of traffic and congestion for themselves, forgetting that it is their duty to solve it for all of us. If you recall, a few years ago, there was an MP who was murdered, and their reaction was, um, let's make sure our MPs are safe. And I said, why don't we make sure that we improve security in the whole society so all of us can feel safe? But that is not only a fault of MPs. It sounds like, as a society, we have institutionalized the process of what I call checking out of public problems. If um, there is no good water supply, instead of pressing the government, buy, get a well for your house. I mean, if um, the schools are bad, instead of pressing the government to improve it, take your kids to a private school. Hmm. This privatization means that the very people who can put public pressure on government functionary to solve problems, the middle class, solve these problems for themselves, and they check out. That is why, for example, our GSS schools have become public warehouses and nobody cares, because whoever matters can afford it and their children are going to private schools. So as a society, we need to look at solving problems for the public. Traffic problems in Accra could be solved. Mm. One way traffic, um, certain times of the day, you know, for example, you can get three lanes going one way from seven to 10, you can, you know, there are a lot of things you can do um, to ease these problems that a lot of people in the public face, mm. instead of trying to solve them for MP. So, Let's stop this process of solving problems just for ourselves. And okay. we should improve, obviously, the process of how Parliament deals with these things. Right. And of course, as you know, they have also been, a, they were also exempted from the speed limit. Uh, but even in the absence of this, this exemption, we know that the speed there, <laughs> they do it all the time. You know, it's interesting. <laughs> a, f a, few, a few months ago, mm. the former UK Prime Minister, Rishi Sumak, was fined yeah. for driving without a seatbelt. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. A few weeks ago. Right. 